In working with many different people in my mentorship program to help them land their first job as an aspiring software developer, I've noticed that there are five critical skills that you can master as an aspiring developer to make yourself stand out amongst the crowd of other people who are trying to do this. So obviously when you do start applying, there's a bunch of other people out there and a potential employer has to figure out, okay, are you different from them in any meaningful way? Are you going to be able to contribute? And I found that these skills that I'm gonna cover in this video are going to set you apart, are gonna make you look a lot different and give you a leg up on the competition. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive into that, but before I do, I'm just gonna do my obligatory introduction here. I'm Andy Sterkowitz, I'm a self-taught software developer. I taught myself to code back in 2014. I landed my first job in 2015, and I've created this channel to help share with you guys how to do the same. So I share tips and advice, as well as advice that I give a lot of my clients as well to land that first job in the field. So definitely recommend hitting the subscribe button below. Also make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. The first skill that you're gonna to wanna to master as an aspiring software developer is the ability to write clean code. Early on in your career, you're gonna write a lot of hacky code. That's just kind of the way it goes. You're just trying to figure out how to make things work and you're gonna throw together solutions that are sub-optimal, meaning they have a lot of bugs in them potentially, or they're hard to change and add on to later on. So by learning the principles of clean code, which I've actually shot a video, I'll include that link here, as well as I would recommend reading the book Clean Code by Bob Martin. By really implementing those principles, what you're essentially doing is similar to an author who's writing a novel, you're gonna make that novel easy to comprehend and easy to understand. And think about when you read your last favorite book, like did you really have to stop and think like, what is the author saying here? You probably got so engaged and were just able to read through it very easily. Well, in the same manner, you wanna make your code very readable. It's that somebody else can go in there and pretty much see exactly what you're doing. And there are many different principles of how to do this, right? So for example, writing functions that do one thing and doing it well, making them concise, well-named functions and variables, amongst many other different principles. But when you do this, what happens is, is code is easier to read. When code is easier to read, it's easier to create, meaning you can write more code, which makes you more productive. And it also reduces the amount of mistakes and bugs. And honestly, you'll future self will thank you for writing clean code because when you go to back to projects six months ago that were written clean, man, there's nothing better because you just get right into it and you figure it out. Um, now, by the way, this is really important from an employer's perspective because when you go into an interview and they see that you've written clean code, they're gonna be like, this is awesome. If you can even explain why you did it, it looks really good as well. So learn to write clean code. This is something you'll learn over the course of your career, but it's, it's a constant uh, skill that you will learn. The second skill that you're gonna master is the ability to communicate in a technical manner. It's highly likely that when you get your first job, you're gonna be working on a team with other developers and your ability to communicate with them clearly and effectively is really important because that's what's gonna make you productive. If you don't understand a lot of the vernacular that's going to be used as a programmer, then it's gonna be hard to be effective in communication. For example, say you ask a coworker for help and they respond to you in a suggestion and say something like, I don't know, uh, oh, you have to iterate through that array and you have to return uh, the specific object whose age property is greater than 21 or something like that. A lot of those words have specific meaning. They're not just, the chances are good that person didn't casually come up with that sentence. They're using those words specifically to give you an idea of how to write the code. If you don't understand that, it's going to be a struggle. The only way to get better at communication is to practice a lot, right? I mean, you have to practice your own communication skills. So writing uh, your ideas down, like writing concepts out, explaining concepts. Uh, so you could start a blog, for example. If you have a group of people, if you have a Slack channel that you're a part of, explain as much as you can. Try to help other people and explain as much as you can, as often as you can. Uh, you could even just journal if you don't have anything like that. Just explain concepts to yourself, write it out on paper, and try to get better as you go. But if you go to an interview and you can't really explain a technical concept because you haven't practiced it, it's going to show. And you could be a really good developer, but if you can't explain it, then it's just gonna look like you maybe don't know what you're doing. So practice, practice, practice. That's the only way to get better, but communication is very important. The third skill that you wanna master is the ability to debug applications effectively. So as a software developer, you're gonna make a ton of mistakes. That I can guarantee you. There's gonna be like little tiny logic errors in your code as you're writing it. You're also gonna fat finger the keyboard and you'll have a misspelled variable in JavaScript. It'll take you hours to figure out, oh my gosh, that was the problem. But it's not about not making mistakes as a software developer. It's really about the ability to find out where the mistake is and fix it as quickly as possible. And the only way you can do that is through being an effective debugger. Now, being an effective debugger means that you have to know the tools that are available for what you're working on. So the programming language or technology that you're working on, but then also knowing how to go through the process of elimination to find out where that bug is, where that error is. 
The only way you get better at this, by the way, is building a lot of projects on your own, making a ton of mistakes, and just going to the debugger every time and finding that process that works for you for figuring it out. A lot of people hate that, by the way, because they feel like when they make an error, it's you know holding them back, it's stopping them from making progress. But anytime you come onto an error, use it as a, a, an opportunity to learn about how to debug and how to figure out where the problem lies. Because when you go into a company and when you're writing code, you're still gonna be making mistakes. You're gonna have to track down bugs too. That's gonna be part of your job as well. So you wanna get good at this early on. It will make you really good at reading code, by the way. It will make you really good at writing code too, because you'll see problems with the way you wrote code and you'll be able to implement a lot of those clean code principles as well. So practice, 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 get good at debugging. It really makes you stand out from a lot of other people that are out there. The fourth skill that you'll want to master as a developer is the ability to finish projects. Uh, there's nothing worse than seeing a new programmer's portfolio on GitHub and seeing that most of the projects aren't finished, they're 50% done, 80% done, or even worse, I pull down their code and there's errors, there's bugs, the code doesn't compile. Think about it from an employer's perspective. If they're looking at it and that's what they're seeing, it's a really bad sign. I get why this happens. A lot of you guys, you're building a project, you get really excited about it, but then you run into the hard part, right? There's some complicated logic or there's just something that you don't really quite understand how to proceed with. And so you work on it for a few days and you eventually get to the point where you're like, you know what? I wanna start on something new so I can feel like I'm progressing. And so you start a new project and the same thing happens. You get about 80% done and then all of a sudden you switch to the next thing and the next thing. All of a sudden you have six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 projects out there that are half completed or 80% completed or whatever. So you don't wanna do this. I mean, look, as a software developer, there are going to be times where you are stuck on a single problem that's not letting you proceed for days. It happens. You have to have that stamina, that mental discipline to stick with it and really try your best to figure it out from different angles. It doesn't mean that you have to sit there for eight hours a day and just think about that single problem, but you're gonna to wanna to experiment, tweak things, test things out. That's part of being a software developer. When you get hired, by the way, they're not gonna give you a work item or a bug to fix and say, hey, you know what? Just get about 80% of the way there. That's all we need it. They're expecting you to complete that work item, to finish it. And the only way you're going to do that is if you practice it on your own, going through the tough things or figuring out some of the hardest problems that you have to work on will give you that confidence that when you get into a job, you can pretty much handle whatever is thrown at you. So the only cure for this, of course, is practice, 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 but making sure that you are sticking through the hard parts of your projects and actually finishing them. The fifth skill I think you should master is working with source control. Specifically, I mean Git. For some of you guys out there, you might be surprised to hear this because Git really doesn't have that much to do with programming. It's not doesn't help your programming skills, but because Git is so widely used now and it's really the de facto way to share code, right, via GitHub, I think it's one of the most important skills to learn because if you go to a company and you're a really good software developer, but you don't really know Git and that company uses Git, it's gonna be hard for them to onboard you into that process because that's how a lot of software development companies or software development teams work. So you wanna learn the basics of Git. I'm talking about obviously how to work with the Git, the basics, how to create commits, create a repository, but also how Git branching works, how rebasing works, how merging works, how to clone. All these things are really important in Git. And Git isn't really complicated, but when you first get into it, it can be a lot to throw on you, especially if you're not used to working with the terminal or the command line. So I'd recommend to really make sure you know it very well and you feel comfortable with most of the fundamentals and basics. If you don't, again, I think it can just look kind of bad if you go there and you don't really know how to contribute from the very beginning in terms of using source control properly and getting into the workflow that most software developers are used to. So those are the five skills that I recommend that you master if you really wanna make this career change and stand out from the rest of the crowd. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as the YouTube algorithm really loves that. Also, if you think I left something out, please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Other than that, guys, if you are interested in making this career change into software development and you wanna work with me one-on-one -on -one to do that, I would highly recommend checking out my mentorship program. In that mentorship program, I really work with people to help them achieve their goals in this field. If you're interested in inquiring about the mentorship program, what I would recommend you do is to book a call with me, a career strategy session, during that call, what we do to figure out if things are a good fit is number one, figure out what your issues are, what is going on, what are the problems you're having, what do you need my help with, as well as what your goals are. I wanna figure out what you're trying to do to see if everything is a good fit. If it works, we can talk about mentorship, what it would look like for you, and take it from there. So if you're interested in that, I would recommend going to the link in the description below and booking a call as soon as possible as times do fill up rather quickly. Other than that, that's all I have for today. Thank you as always for watching and peace out guys.